Have you ever stopped to think that your faith may be your greatest danger today? Shocking, isn't it? But the truth is, an unprepared faith can be your undoing in the times to come. What would you do if your belief suddenly became illegal? If your prayers were considered an act of rebellion, it sounds like fiction, but it's closer to reality than you might think. In this video, I will reveal Bible secrets that few know about how to prepare for the last days. Information that can not only save your faith, but turn it into an impregnable fortress. And the best, you can start applying this today and see immediate results in your spiritual life. Get ready for a journey that will challenge everything you thought you knew about being a Christian in these turbulent times. And in the end, a powerful prayer will seal this new chapter of your walk with God. Don't waste a second. Click the subscribe button now and activate the bell. Your faith will thank you and you will be one step ahead in the spiritual battle that lies ahead. In our times, many wonder if we are living in the last days mentioned in the scriptures. It's a question that echoes in the hearts of Christians around the world, especially as we observe the rapid and often disruptive changes in our society. Paul's words at 2 Timothy 3.1 resonate with eerie clarity. Know this, in the last days, terrible times will come. This statement is not only a grim prediction, but a warning to followers of Christ to be vigilant and prepared. Billy Graham, a renowned evangelist, often emphasized that these last days are not necessarily a specific chronological period, but an era marked by distinctive features that challenge the faith and perseverance of believers. As we delve deeper into this topic, it is crucial to understand that the anticipated hardship for Christians is not a sign of defeat, but an opportunity to strengthen faith. Jesus, at Matthew 24, 13, promises, He that endures to the end will be saved. This perseverance is not a mere passive resistance, but an active affirmation of faith in the midst of adversity. The challenges we face today, from the increasing secularization of society to global conflicts and moral crises, can be seen as catalysts for a deeper spiritual awakening. It is in these times of trial that the true nature of our faith is revealed and refined like gold purified by fire, as described in 1 Peter 1, 7. The intensification of wickedness, mentioned in several biblical passages, should not be a cause for despair, but a call to action. In Ephesians 6, 13, Paul exhorts us, Therefore put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and stand immovable after you have done all. This military metaphor reminds us that we are in a spiritual battle where every believer has a crucial role to play. The armor of God is not a passive protection, but an active equipment to face the challenges of the last days with courage and determination. Each piece of this armor, truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and God's word is essential to navigating the turbulent times we face. The cultural and ethical conflicts we witness today are not new to God. The prophet Isaiah, centuries ago, foresaw a time when people would call good evil and evil good, Isaiah 5.20. This inversion of values is evident in many areas of contemporary society, challenging Christians to remain firm in their convictions without losing love and compassion for those who think differently. It is a delicate but essential balance that requires wisdom and discernment. Jesus taught us to be crafty as serpents and harmless as doves, Matthew 10, 16, an instruction particularly relevant to navigating the complex ethical challenges of our time. Preparation for these difficult times is not just intellectual or theological, but deeply spiritual and practical. The Apostle Peter warns us, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be sober and watchful, so that you may pray. 1 Peter 4, 7. This sobriety implies mental and spiritual clarity, an ability to discern the signs of the times and respond with prayer and action. 
The mindfulness mentioned here is not an attitude of fear or paranoia, but of conscious attention and continuous preparation. It is a call to live each day with purpose and intentionality, cultivating a deep intimacy with God that will sustain us in times of trial. As we face the challenges of the past few days, it is crucial to remember that we are not alone in this journey. The community of faith plays a vital role in our spiritual perseverance and growth. The author of Hebrews encourages us, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a church according to the custom of some, but let us seek to encourage one another all the more so when you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10.25 This day referred to is not only the return of Christ, but every moment in which we face the challenges of our faith. Fellowship with other believers strengthens us, provides us with perspective, and reminds us that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. The spiritual resilience needed for these times is not something we develop overnight. It is the result of constant spiritual discipline and daily dependence on the Holy Spirit. Paul reminds us in Galatians 5.16, Therefore I say, live by the Spirit, and you will by no means gratify the desires of the flesh. This life in the Spirit is characterized by continual growth in the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These attributes are not just personal hallmarks of character, but essential tools for navigating the ethical and moral challenges of the last days. They enable us to respond with grace and truth to the pressures of a world increasingly hostile to the Christian faith. As we reflect on the challenges of the past few days, it's crucial to maintain a balanced perspective. Yes, there will be difficulties, but there is also a promise of ultimate victory. The Apostle John offers us a powerful insight in Revelation 21.4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more weeping, no more pain, for the old order has passed away. Aye. This hope is not an escape from reality, but an anchor that sustains us through the storms of life. It allows us to face the challenges of the last days, not with fear or despair, but with an unwavering trust in God's sovereign plan. As we move forward, let us remember that every challenge we face is an opportunity to demonstrate the transformative power of the gospel in our lives and in the world around us. The cooling off of love, mentioned by Jesus in Matthew 24, 12, is one of the most striking signs of the last days. This phenomenon does not refer only to romantic love, but to agape, the selfless, selfless love that should characterize followers of Christ. Nowadays, we see this cooling manifested in different ways, in indifference to the suffering of others, in social and political polarization, and in exacerbated individualism. As Christians, we are called to swim against this current, cultivating a love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. This love is not a fleeting emotion, but a daily decision to reflect the character of Christ in our interactions. The persecution of Christ's followers, far from being a novelty, intensifies in the last days. Jesus warned, If you persecuted me, they will persecute you also. John 15, 20. This persecution takes many forms, from open hostility to subtle marginalization. In some parts of the world, Christians face physical and legal violence for their faith. In others, the persecution is more subtle, manifesting itself through social or professional discrimination. The Apostle Peter encourages us, do not be dismayed at the fire that arises among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. 1 Peter 4.12 This perspective helps us to view persecution not as an anomaly, but as an opportunity for witness and spiritual growth. The moral confusion that pervades our society is another clear sign of the last days. 
The prophet Isaiah foresaw a time when people would call evil good and good evil, Isaiah 5.20. We see this reflected in the relativization of moral values, in the normalization of behaviors previously considered transgressive, and in the rejection of absolute ethical standards. For the Christian, navigating this shaky moral ground requires discernment and courage. Paul exhorts us, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. This implies an ongoing commitment to biblical truth, even when it goes against the dominant cultural currents. The proliferation of false spiritualities is another striking aspect of the last days. Jesus warned of false prophets who would come and deceive many, Matthew 24, 11. Today, we see a myriad of spiritual beliefs and practices that stray from biblical truth, often blending elements from different religions or promoting a self-centered spirituality. The Apostle John counsels us, Beloved, do not believe in any spirit, but examine the spirits to see if they are from God, 1 John 4, 1. This spiritual discernment is crucial for maintaining the integrity of faith in a world of confusing and often misleading spiritual options. The increase in violence and corruption predicted in scripture is evident in our society today. Paul describes the last days as perilous times where people will be selfish, covetous, boastful, arrogant, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful without love of goodness, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, cruel, enemies of good. 2 Timothy 3, 2, 3. This description seems almost prophetic when we look at the current news. As Christians, we are called to be salt of the earth and light of the world, Matthew 5, 13 to 14, in the midst of this moral darkness. This means living in a countercultural way, demonstrating integrity, compassion, and fairness in our daily actions. Social isolation and contempt for the Christian faith are growing challenges in recent days. Many believers experience a sense of alienation in their workplaces, schools, and even in their families due to their faith. Jesus foresaw this, saying, you will be hated by all men for my sake, Luke 21, 17. This isolation can lead to the temptation to compromise one's faith in order to conform or to withdraw from society altogether. However, we are called to a delicate balance, to be in the world, but not of the world. John 17, 14 to 15. This requires wisdom to maintain meaningful relationships with non-believers without compromising our convictions. Growing religious intolerance, particularly directed at Christians, is a global phenomenon in recent days. In some regions, this manifests itself in open and violent persecution. In others, it takes the form of social and legal marginalization. The Apostle Paul reminds us that all who desire to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, 2 Timothy 3.12. This reality calls us to a resilient faith and love for those who persecute us, following the example of Christ who prayed for his persecutors, Luke 23, 34. It is a call to demonstrate the transformation of the gospel through our responses to adversity. The redefinition of Christian values in diverse contexts is a significant latter-day challenge. Fundamental biblical concepts about family, sexuality, and the sanctity of life are being questioned and reinterpreted by secular society. As Christians, we are called to remain faithful to biblical truth, even when it puts us in conflict with cultural norms. The prophet Daniel offers us a powerful example of how to live with integrity in a culture hostile to faith. Daniel 1.8 at the same time, we are challenged to communicate these truths with love and grace, always ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. But do this with gentleness and respect. 1 Peter 3, 15-16 Preparing for the last days is like building a spiritual fortress. The foundation of this stronghold is regular Bible study. 
As Paul wrote to Timothy, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 This study should not be superficial, but a deep dive into divine truths. Imagine yourself as a spiritual archaeologist, digging through the layers of the Word to uncover hidden treasures. Each verse is a precious stone that strengthens your faith. Establish a daily habit of reading, meditating, and applying the Scriptures. Use study tools, participate in Bible discussion groups, and allow the Word to shape your thinking and actions. Communion with other Christians is another fundamental pillar in this preparation. The author of Hebrews exhorts us, Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a church, according to the custom of some, but let us encourage one another. Hebrews 10.25 This fellowship goes beyond simply attending a service. It involves sharing life, supporting each other in struggles, celebrating victories together. Think of the early church described in Acts 2.42-47, where believers were united in purpose and heart. Seek deep relationships with other Christians, be vulnerable, offer and receive support. In times of trial, this network of relationships will be a crucial support. Constant prayer is the oxygen of the spiritual life. Paul instructs us to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. This does not mean being on one's knees 24 hours a day, but maintaining an ongoing dialogue with God. Turn your daily life into a constant conversation with the Father. Pray while driving, while working, while resting. Develop a sensitivity to God's presence at all times. Like David who wrote, I set the Lord before me always. Psalm 16:8. Maintain a constant awareness of the divine presence. Prayer is not only talking, but also listening. Set aside moments of silence to listen to God's small voice. The development of a robust spiritual life is like the training of an Olympic athlete. It requires discipline, consistency, and an unwavering focus on the goal. Peter encourages us, add virtue to your faith, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to piety, fraternity, and to brotherhood love. 2 Peter 1.5.7 This spiritual growth is a process. Don't be discouraged by failures, but see them as learning opportunities. Cultivate the fruits of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5.22.23. Practice fasting, not just from food, but from distractions that take your focus away from God. Spiritual discernment is crucial in the last days. Jesus warned, Beware lest anyone deceive you. Matthew 24, 4. Developing discernment is like tuning a musical instrument. It requires constant practice and attention to detail. Study the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. Familiarize yourself with the enemy's tactics, as Paul warns, lest Satan take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his intentions, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Learn to distinguish between biblical truth and attractive but deceptive human philosophies. Practice discernment in all areas of life, in the media you consume, in the friendships you cultivate, in the decisions you make. Total dependence on the Holy Spirit, emphasized by Billy Graham, is vital. Jesus promised, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 14, 26. Live in constant surrender to the Spirit. Ask for His guidance in every decision, big or small. Develop a sensitivity to His voice. Like Elijah, who recognized God's voice in the still small whisper, 1 Kings 19:12. Learn to discern the gentle promptings of the Spirit. Allow Him to guide you in interpreting Scripture, making ethical decisions, and witnessing to others. Strengthening faith also involves being prepared to stand up for what you believe. Peter exhorts us, always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3.15 Study Christian Apologetics 
Familiarize yourself with the historical and archaeological evidence that supports the Bible's veracity. Learn to articulate your faith in a clear and compassionate way. Remember, the goal is not to win debates, but to point people to Christ. Develop a deep understanding of how your faith relates to contemporary issues, science, ethics, politics. Be an effective ambassador of God's kingdom in this world. Finally, remember that preparing for the last days is not a lonely task. We are part of a larger body, the universal church. Paul reminds us, just as each of us has a body with many members, in Christ we are many forming one body, Romans 12, 4-5. Connect with church history. Learn from the martyrs and saints of the past. Attend spiritual retreats, conferences and seminars that deepen your understanding and practice of the faith. Get involved in ministries that challenge you to grow. Be a spiritual mentor to others, as teaching is one of the best ways to learn. As we prepare together, we strengthen not only our individual faith, but also the collective resilience of the body of Christ to face the challenges ahead. In the difficult times ahead, the courage of Christians will be tested as never before. But this courage does not come from strength of its own. It springs from unshakable trust in God's promises. As Joshua 1.9 states, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and brave. Do not be terrified or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This promise is not just empty words, but a powerful reminder of God's constant presence in our lives. Imagine yourself as a spiritual soldier, equipped not with physical weapons, but with the armor of God described in Ephesians 6. Each piece of this armor, truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and God's word is a tangible manifestation of God's promise to be with us. The wisdom to navigate through these turbulent times is not merely intellectual, but deeply spiritual. James 1.5 encourages us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all freely and willingly, and it will be granted to him. This divine wisdom allows us to discern the signs of the times and respond in a way that glorifies God. Think of it as a spiritual GPS, guiding us through the maze of challenges we face. God's wisdom often contradicts the wisdom of the world, as we see in 1 Corinthians 1.25. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than the strength of man. Embracing this countercultural wisdom sets us apart and strengthens us. The testimony of Christians in times of adversity is one of the most powerful instruments in God's arsenal. Jesus said in Matthew 5.16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our behavior, attitudes and reactions to difficulties are a living testimony to the transforming power of Christ. When we respond with love to those who persecute us, when we maintain integrity in a corrupt world, when we choose to forgive rather than seek revenge, we are preaching a silent sermon more powerful than any spoken word. This testimony not only impacts non-believers, but also strengthens and encourages other Christians. The practice of love in the face of adversity is a supreme challenge, but also a unique opportunity to reflect the character of Christ. Paul writes in Romans 12, 21, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This love is not a superficial feeling, but a deliberate choice to act in the best interests of others, even when it is difficult. It is to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the prisoner, as Jesus teaches in Matthew 25. It is to see the image of God, even in those who persecute us, and to respond with compassion. This radical love has the power to transform seemingly impossible hearts and situations. The stories of perseverance shared by spiritual leaders throughout the history of the church serve as beacons of hope and inspiration. Think of Polycarp, who faced martyrdom with unwavering courage, or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who resisted Nazism with unwavering faith. 
These stories are not just historical accounts, but living examples of how we can stand firm in our faith in the face of great challenges. As Hebrews 12, 1-2 reminds us, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also get rid of everything that hinders us and the sin that engulfs us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, keeping our eyes single to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Mutual support within the faith community is essential to maintaining unity and hope in difficult times. Paul uses the metaphor of the body in 1 Corinthians 12 to illustrate how vital and interdependent each member of the church is. When one member suffers, all suffer together. When one rejoices, all rejoice. This mutual support manifests itself in practical ways, intercessory prayer, material help, emotional encouragement, and spiritual strengthening. It is to create safe spaces where Christians can be vulnerable, share their struggles, and find strength in community. As Ecclesiastes 4.12 wisely observes, a threefold cord is not easily broken. Maintaining unity in times of external pressure is a powerful testimony to the reality of the gospel. Jesus prayed for this unity in John 17.21, that they may all be one, Father, as you are in me and I in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This unity does not mean uniformity of thought on all issues, but a fundamental harmony based on love for Christ and for one another. It is the ability to disagree on secondary issues without dividing on essential ones. Maintaining this unity requires humility, patience, and a willingness to forgive as Paul exhorts in Ephesians 4, 2, 3. The hope that sustains Christians in difficult times is not naive optimism, but firm trust in God's promises. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4, that we have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and for an inheritance that can never perish, be defiled or lose its value. This hope anchors us when the storms of life threaten to bring us down. It gives us an eternal perspective, reminding us that our current struggles are temporary in light of eternity. As Paul eloquently expresses in Romans 8.18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. This hope is not passive, but pushes us to live lives of active faith and sacrificial love, knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. The promise of reward for those who stand firm in the faith is a beacon of hope amid the storms of life. This is not an earthly reward, but a heavenly inheritance that transcends our current understanding. As Paul eloquently expresses in 1 Corinthians 2.9, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. This promise is not a mere future consolation, but a motivating force for the present. It encourages us to persevere, knowing that every trial faced in faith is building an eternal testimony. Imagine each act of faithfulness as a brick laid in the construction of a heavenly palace, each adding beauty and glory to our eternal abode. The assurance of Jesus' return is the focal point of Christian hope. In John 14:3, Jesus promises, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, that you may be where I am. This promise is not just about a future event, but about a present reality that shapes our daily perspective. Living in expectation of Christ's return keeps us vigilant and focused on our mission. It is like a bridegroom eagerly awaiting his bride. Each day is lived with anticipation and purpose. This hope impels us to live in a holy and dedicated way, as Peter exhorts in 2 Peter 3, 11, 12, knowing that our behavior may even hasten the coming of God's day. The ultimate victory over wickedness promised with Christ's return is not just a future event, but a reality that begins to manifest in our lives today. At Romans 8, 37, Paul declares that, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This victory does not mean the absence of struggles, but triumph in the midst of them. Every act of love in the face of hatred, every choice of forgiveness over bitterness, every moment of faith in the midst of doubt is an anticipation of that ultimate victory. It is as if we are participating in a cosmic battle where every act of faith is a blow against the forces of darkness. Living with confidence, knowing that God is in control, is a revolutionary stance in a chaotic world. The psalmist declares in Psalm 46, 1-2, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in adversity. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth shakes and the mountains sink into the heart of the sea. This confidence is not a naive denial of difficulties, but a bold assertion of God's sovereignty over all circumstances. It's like being in the eye of a hurricane. Although chaos reigns all around, we find an inexplicable peace in the center of God's presence. This confidence allows us to face uncertainties with serenity and challenges with courage. God's grace, superior to all adversity, is the unshakable foundation on which we build our lives. Paul testifies in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This grace is not just a theological concept, but an active and transformative force in our lives. It is like an inexhaustible fountain that gushes within us, providing strength when we are weak, courage when we are afraid, and hope when all seems lost. Recognizing the sufficiency of God's grace frees us from the pressure of having to be strong on our own, allowing us to rest in the strength of the Almighty. Perseverance in faith, far from being a lonely journey, is sustained by fellowship with other believers and the constant presence of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10, 24, 25 exhorts us, and let us consider one another, to encourage one another to love and good works. Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a church, according to the custom of some, but let us encourage one another, all the more so when you see the day approaching. This communion is not only an emotional support, but a spiritual strength. It is like an army marching together. Each soldier strengthens and is strengthened by the others. The Holy Spirit, in turn, is our comforter and guide, as Jesus promises in John 14, 16, 17, ensuring that we are never truly alone on our journey. Trusting in God in the midst of adversity does not exempt us from action, but it drives us to an active involvement in God's plan. James 2.17 reminds us that faith alone, if not accompanied by works, is dead. Our trust in God must manifest itself in concrete acts of love, justice, and mercy. It's like being Christ's hands and feet in the world, bringing hope and transformation to the most unlikely places. Every act of kindness, every word of encouragement, every gesture of compassion becomes a living declaration of the reality of the kingdom of God in the midst of the chaos of the world. As we await Christ's return, we are called to be ambassadors for his kingdom. Paul describes us in 2 Corinthians 5.20 as ambassadors of Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. Oh, this is a position of honor and responsibility. As ambassadors, we represent the values, culture, and interests of the kingdom of God in a world that is often hostile to these ideals. Our lives should be a living testimony to the reality of Christ, a compelling invitation for others to experience God's grace and love. It's like being a bright light in a dark room. Our presence is to dispel the darkness around us and lead others to the truth and life found in Christ. The present moment is crucial for spiritual preparation. Just as Noah built the ark before the flood, we must strengthen our faith now before the storms of the last days intensify. Proverbs 27.1 warns us, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what it will bring. This wisdom incites us to a spiritual urgency, to an honest evaluation of our present faith. Think deeply. Is your faith like a house built on rock or sand? 
When the winds of adversity blow, will your spiritual foundation endure? This is the time to solidify your foundations, deepening your knowledge of scripture, intensifying your prayer life, and cultivating genuine intimacy with God. Sharing the message of spiritual preparation with your community is not just a suggestion, but a sacred responsibility. In Ezekiel 33.6, God warns of the watchman's responsibility to warn the people of impending danger. In a similar way, each believer has a duty to warn and encourage others. This does not mean spreading fear, but rather hope and preparation. Organize Bible study groups focused on latter-day themes. Create spaces for open dialogue where people can express their doubts and fears, finding comfort and direction in Scripture. Be a catalyst for spiritual growth in your community by inspiring others to take their faith seriously. Participating in faith-strengthening discussions is vital for spiritual growth. Proverbs 27.17 reminds us that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Engage in deep conversations about biblical topics, challenge your own beliefs, and be open to new insights. Seek out spiritual mentors who can guide you on your journey of faith. Attend conferences, seminars, and retreats that deepen your understanding of Scripture and the Christian life. Every discussion, Every exchange of ideas is an opportunity to strengthen your faith and prepare for the challenges ahead. Remember, spiritual growth rarely happens in isolation. It is in communion and dialogue that we often find the answers we seek. Drawing closer to God is the heart of spiritual preparation. James 4.8 promises, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. This closeness is not just emotional, but an intentional and disciplined search for God's presence. Establish regular times of stillness and contemplation. Practice fasting, not just from food, but from distractions that take your focus away from God. Explore different forms of prayer and meditation on scripture. Let Psalm 119.105 be a reality in your life. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The closer you are to God, the more clearly you will see His direction and feel His presence in the challenging days ahead. The question, how can I live today in a way that will be ready for the days to come, should be a daily reflection. Matthew 24, 44 exhorts us, Therefore you also must be prepared, for the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. This preparation is not about predicting the future, but about living the present with intentionality and fidelity. Evaluate your priorities. Do they reflect eternal values or temporal concerns? Examine your relationships. Are you investing in connections that build your faith or that compromise it? Consider your habits. Are they forming a character that is resistant to temptation or making you vulnerable? Every decision you make today is a brick in building your spiritual fortitude for tomorrow. Your action today is the foundation of your future resilience. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 25, Paul compares the Christian life to a race. Do you not know that of all those who run in the stadium, only one wins the prize? Run in such a way that you reach the prize. All who compete in the games undergo rigorous training to obtain a crown that soon perishes, but we do it to win a crown that lasts forever. This rigorous spiritual training involves discipline, perseverance, and focus. Develop solid spiritual habits now. Practice forgiveness, even when it's hard. Cultivate gratitude in all circumstances. Exercise your faith by facing your fears with courage. Every act of obedience, every choice to love when it's easier to hate, every moment of trusting God in the face of uncertainty is forging in you a resilience that will stand the tests of the last days. Preparing for the last days is not a solitary task, but a community journey. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10 wisely observes it is better to have company than to be alone, because the greater is the reward of the labor of two persons. 
If one falls, the friend can help him to get up. Actively seek out a faith community that shares your vision of spiritual preparation. Form prayer partnerships where you can regularly intercede for each other and share your struggles and victories. Participate in community service projects that put your faith into action. Get involved in ministries that challenge you to step out of your comfort zone and trust God more. Remember, the church is not just a place to go, but a body to belong to and grow together. Finally, always keep an eternal perspective. Colossians 3.2 instructs us, keep your mind on things above and not on earthly things. This guidance is not a call to ignore the realities of this world, but to view them through the lens of eternity. As you prepare for the last days, do not lose sight of the ultimate purpose, the glory of God and the expansion of His kingdom. Every challenge you face, every act of faith you exercise, every moment of spiritual growth is contributing to something far greater than you can see or imagine right now. Live each day with the awareness that your actions have eternal repercussions. May the anticipation of Christ's return and the full realization of the kingdom of God be the driving force behind your preparation and your daily living. As we approach the last days, spiritual preparation is not just an option, but a vital necessity. Remember, the faith that stands firm is not built in the moment of crisis, but forged daily through the study of the Word, constant prayer, and fellowship with other believers. May each of us accept the call to be a light in the midst of the growing darkness, facing the challenges ahead with courage, wisdom, and unwavering love. May our confidence be firmly anchored in God's promises, knowing that He is in control and that His grace is sufficient for every adversity we may face. Now let us unite in prayer, seeking God's face and His guidance for the days to come. Heavenly Father, we approach Your throne of grace with humble and expectant hearts. We recognize that times are difficult and that the challenges to our faith seem to increase by the day. But Lord, we declare that your grace is greater than any adversity we can face. Pour out upon us a double portion of your Holy Spirit. May the fire of your love consume every fear, every doubt, every hesitation in our hearts. Strengthen us, O God, that we may stand firm as living witnesses of thy power and glory in these latter days. May your Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, giving us discernment to recognize the signs of the times and wisdom to navigate through the coming storms. Father, we cry out for a revival in our lives, in our families, in our churches. May your Holy Spirit move powerfully among us, breaking hardened hearts, restoring broken relationships, and igniting a renewed passion for you. Lord, may we be like the wise virgins, with our lamps filled with the oil of your Spirit, always ready for the bridegroom's return. Prepare us, O God, to be effective ambassadors of your kingdom in these challenging times. May your Holy Spirit enable us to love the enemy, to forgive the unforgivable, and to have faith even when all seems lost. Pour out upon us a fresh anointing, a supernatural power to perform signs and wonders, demonstrating to the world that you are the true and living God. Lord, we pray for protection from the enemy's strategies. May your Holy Spirit warn us against the subtleties of deception and strengthen us against the temptations of these last days. Clothe us with the whole armor of God, that we may stand firm against the wiles of the devil. May your Holy Spirit be like a wall of fire around us, guarding our minds, our hearts, and our souls. Give us, O oh Father, an unshakable faith that moves mountains, a love that conquers all hatred, and a hope that shines even in the darkest nights. May your Holy Spirit fill us with supernatural courage to proclaim the gospel without fear, even in the face of persecution. Father, we thank you that we know that you hear our prayers. We trust that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you are preparing us not only to survive, but to prosper spiritually in the days to come. May every challenge we face be an opportunity to demonstrate the reality 
of your love and power. Strengthen us to be faithful to the end, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And may your Holy Spirit keep us in perfect peace, knowing that the final victory is already assured in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if this message has touched your heart, don't keep it to yourself. Be part of this community of faith that is preparing for the last days. Click now on the subscribe button and activate the bell to receive more content like this. Together, strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we can meet any challenge that comes. Don't miss the next videos where we will continue this journey of spiritual preparation. Remember, your faith today shapes your victory tomorrow. Sign up now and join us on this journey of faith and preparation for the times to come. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.